construct the truth table for the statement not P or Q. Again, notice the parentheses carefully. The parentheses give us the order of operations. So first, we're going to take P or Q, and then we'll negate that. So again, we only have two individual statements, P and Q. So the first two columns look identical to all the ones that we'll do with two statements. We have true, 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 false, false, true, false, false all possible combinations of true and false for P and Q. When we get to doing compound statements with three statements, P, Q, and R, we'll need eight rows in our table to account for all eight possibilities, but we'll get to those later. So because of the order of operations here, we first take P or Q, that's the next column we'll fill in, and then we simply negate that column. To do P or Q, Remember that OR is true as long as either of them is true or if both of them are true. So as long as at least one of them is true, P or Q is true. So it would be true in the first case, where they're both true. It would also be true in the second case, where P is true. It would also be true in the third case, where Q is true. It's only the last one that will be false because neither one of them is true. So P or Q is false. Then, to take the negation of that, we simply take the column we just built and flip each of the truth values. Trues become false, and false becomes true. So that's the final column for this compound statement, not P or Q. And if you remember the last example, where we accounted for not P and not Q, we got exactly this in our last column which again states that those two statements are equivalent. And we'll get back to that later when we talk about De Morgan's Laws. But for now, we just note that interesting fact.